Afonso de Albuquerque was an explorer unlike any other. Sailing over 100,000 miles in his lifetime, you could say he was well-traveled. He explored new lands despite the conditions and torment he had to go through to get there. Without him, Portugal would have been behind by decades of information on the Middle East and India. Albuquerque is not only the name of a small town in Mexico, it was the name of a historic figure who brought a wealth of information to his homeland. Afonso de Albuquerque was born in 1453 in Alhantra, Portugal, near Lisbon. His father, Gonzalo de Albuquerque, was lord of Vila Verde dos Francos, a small parish in the municipality of West Portugal. He held an important position in the land's court and was believed to be illegitimately connected to the monarchy at the time. His mother, Dona Lenora de Menenses, didn't really do much, other than give birth to the greatest explorer of his generation. He was educated in mathematics and Latin, which at the time was not a dead language. He befriended a young boy named John, who later became more widely known as King John II of Portugal. He would help his pal Afonso by supplying him with a ship and cargo on many of his expeditions. Afonso de Albuquerque has an impressive list of expeditions made, so stay with me here. His adventure started off in 1503 with an expedition to India. Sailing on his trusty ship, the Flor de la Mar, he and his crew set out their year-long voyage. Their goal was to establish the King of Cohen on the throne, and after they accomplished this, Afonso and his men returned back to Portugal. But it wasn't much later, in 1506, that he returned to India, but not before having his first son. Then, in 1507, he set out from Lisbon on a journey that would bring him to Socotra, where, after a short skirmish, he set up a fortress at Souk, hoping to establish a base to stop the Red Sea commerce in the Indian Ocean. He then took 500 men and advanced towards Ormuz in the Persian Gulf, where he captured the city and set up another fort. In 1509, after a naval battle against the Mamluks and the Ottomans, his decisive victory cleared out the Indian Ocean, which led to Portuguese rule over all trade in the area for around 100 years. It wasn't until a petition from his former officers came up that Albuquerque was arrested at Canonere on the charges of being unfit for office. He remained captive on his own ship until some months later when he was released. Now I know this is just a lot of maps and I'm sorry, but this guy has traveled a lot. I know these stories aren't really riddled with pirates or the Black Plague, but it gets a little better. So I'm just taking this time to assure you that we're almost there and to tell you to hang in there. So in 1510, with a fleet of 23 ships and 1,200 men, he sailed to Goa on a tip that the Mamluks were recovering there after a hard-loss battle. His surprise attack worked better than imagined, and thanks to Afonso de Albuquerque, Portugal has acquired a long-awaited trading port off the southern coast of India. It wasn't until, in, it wasn't until November 20th, 1511, off the coast of Malabar, Afonso, returning with a ship full of treasure recently captured from Malacca, that a large storm arose and led to the subsequent shipwreck of the Flor de la Mar. Despite the fact that he had been told countless times of the treachery of his route, he still went on his own way, much the style of his entire life, and ended up barely escaping with his life. It wasn't until December 16, 1550, out on the coast of Goa, that Afonso de Albuquerque fell fatally ill. It was there he died doing what he loved, exploring for knowledge. Afonso de Albuquerque is now buried under a Wendy's in New York. No, I'm just kidding. He's buried in some field somewhere. Not only did Afonso de Albuquerque have an amazing beard, but Afonso de Albuquerque's mark left on India was larger than any other of the time period. I've only told you about half of the expeditions he made, all of which led to greater wealth not only in gold, but in knowledge of the landscape and of the people for Portugal. If it wasn't for him, much of the information the world has about India and the Middle East wouldn't have come until centuries later. His philosophy was never clearly stated, but it's safe to say that he believed that curiosity and a thirst for knowledge is the most important trait anyone can possess. Going above and beyond is not something reserved for extra credit, but it's something that should be exploited every chance you get. Without a doubt, Afonso de Albuquerque was indeed a Hall of Famer.